Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I am bringing you today's word for February 24th, 2020. And so I've been teaching about great freedom and that I've been flowing in this vein of the importance of your words. The Bible actually has a lot to say about the importance of your words. And so we've been looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. Today, we're going to look at that same verse again, and we're also going to look at something that Jesus said in Luke chapter 6. The title of today's message is Speak the Word Only, part 6. Speak the Word Only, part 6. Here we go. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13 says, and since we have the same spirit of faith according to that which was written, I believe and therefore have I spoken. Paul said, well, we as new covenant, born again, blood-bought believers, New Testament, we also believe and therefore speak. We speak what we believe. We speak words of faith from a believing heart. In Luke chapter 6, verses 43 to 45, this is what Jesus said once again about the importance of our words. He said, a good tree cannot produce bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot produce good fruit. You can tell what a tree is like by the fruit that it produces. You cannot pick, pick figs or grapes from thorn bushes. Good people do not, or I'm sorry, good people do good things because of what's in their heart. And bad people do bad things because of the evil that's in their hearts. So, and this is this is really what I, I want to focus in on, that Jesus said, your words show what's in your heart. Your words show what's in your heart. So what does this mean to you today? We're going to learn a few things from what Jesus said. Um, I have three things to share with you on this Monday morning to set the tone for the whole week. Three things to share with you as it relates to the importance of your words. Speak the word only. Part six, three things. Number one, here we go. So trees produce fruit and humans, we produce words. And this is, and Jesus connected the two. So if you read Luke 6, 43 to 45, and you read that prayerfully, you read that carefully, you see that Jesus is making a direct connection between, or the relationship between the words a person speaks and the type of person that he or she is, right? Just like a tree is known by the fruit that it produces, we're known by words. So basically Jesus was saying this. He was like, well, first of all, how do you know the tree? Well, what comes out of that tree? Oh, snap. An apple, it came out of that tree. So what type of tree is it? It's an apple tree, (laughs) right? You walk over, oh, look at this one. A mango came out of this tree. So what type of tree is it? A mango tree. How, How are you identifying the tree? You're identifying the tree by what it produces. And then he took it a step further. He was like, well, you're not gonna get good fruit from a bad tree and you're not gonna get bad fruit from a good tree. So like if this tree is good, then it's not only... If, it, if this is a good orange tree, not only is it going to produce oranges, but it's going to produce good oranges, right? And this is a, if this is a bad orange tree, not only is it going to produce oranges, but it's going to produce bad oranges because it's going to produce whatever it is. And so he's like that. He's like, well, that's how it is with us. Your words are telling everyone what's going on on the inside of you. Just like trees produce fruit, we as humans, we literally produce words. And the quality of the fruit is a direct reflection of the makeup or the composition of the tree in a like manner, Jesus is saying, that the quality of your words is a direct reflection of the quality or the content of your character or what's going on on the inside of you. He's saying that a good tree is incapable of producing bad fruit and a bad tree is incapable of producing good fruit. And then Jesus connected that to us and he's saying that your words are showing everyone what's in your heart. The King James says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So my point is that the quality and the type of your words is a direct indication of the content and the quality of your heart. See, your heart is a reservoir and your heart is your deposit. And what is in you abundantly is gonna come out of you consistently. So when something comes out of you that you don't like, when something comes out of you that like, let's say you're around, let's say you're around your church folk, your church friends, and you say something that you didn't want them to hear, but it's something that you say all the time, you just didn't want them to hear. And you're like, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, excuse me. 
Where did that come from? Don't try to act like you don't know where that came from. It's in the it's in the reservoir of your soul. It's in the deposit of your heart. Number two, you and your words are one. If Jesus put so much emphasis on the importance of our words, then we have to do the same thing. Can we honestly think that we can pray? And this is where I'm going to make a connection in this series between words of prayer and words of faith. So do you think that you can pray one thing in the morning? You watch today's word, you do your confession, you do your prayers, you get ready for work, all of that stuff. And you do your prayers in the morning and you are praying the will of God. And you pray that in the morning and like you believe you receive and then you go to work. And do you think that you can then spend the rest of your day speaking words against it, speaking words of fear and doubt and unbelief all day long and still expect to see results? Absolutely not. Your words of prayer must be followed by words of faith. Why? Because you and your words are one. Okay, let me say it this way. People know you by your words. Just, okay, let me explain it. How do we know God? Think about it for a minute. How do you really know God? So the word of God contains the, the character and the attributes and the nature of God himself. So we, most of us, of course, we know God through experiences and through the Holy Spirit, but a lot of what we know about God, we know from his word. So we know God by his words, right? And people know you by your words. Okay, most of you that watch today's word or that get today's word via email, most of you don't know me personally. So what you know about me is what I'm saying. You know me by my words. My words are birthed out of the reservoir of my soul. Your words are birthed out of the reservoir of your soul. Your words are an outward expression of the internal content and the condition of your heart. So you cannot separate you from your words, you can't say, oh, I said that. Well, I said that, but that's not me. No, if you and your words are one, that's why it's very important for us to speak the word only. If you ever get to the point where you can speak the word only and you and your words are one and you're speaking the word only and you and your words are one and you're speaking the word only and you and your words are one, you're gonna have what you say and you will experience the word of God, the will of God, God's best in your life. Why? Because you're making a human alignment with God's assignment with your words and your actions. I'll explain further. Number three, I only have three points for you this morning. This last point will be my last point. Uh, I mean, this third point will be my last point. Your words are telling everyone outside of you what's going on inside of you. Let me say that again. Your words, when you go to work and you talk to people, your words are telling everyone outside of you what's going on inside of you. See, the words you speak are a litmus test for the condition of your heart. So daily, I don't know if you know this, but every day your words are telling on you. Your words are telling everyone who you are by expressing what's going on on the inside of you. If you go to work pissed off, right? You're like, I can't stand this. I can't stand these people. Man. Well, obviously you're only saying that because of what's going on in your heart. If you go to work with a spring in your step and a smile in your face and a song in your heart, you're like, hey, how you doing? I'm blessed, highly favored, got it going on. How you doing, girl? And so what, what's going on? Your words are telling people what's going on in your heart. So your words are expressing to everyone outside of you what's happening inside of you. So if you don't like the message that your words are portraying, then it's time to make a change. And the only way to change what's coming out of you is to change what's inside of you, right? It's to change the quality and the content and the condition of your heart because your heart is a reservoir. So your eyes are a gate. They're like a gateway to your soul. Your ears are a gate. They're a gateway to your soul. Whatever you allow, allow through your eye gate gets down in your heart. Whatever you allow through your ear gate, gets down in your heart. So to change your heart, you must change your input. You have to consider what you are allowing through your eyes and through your ears on a daily basis. Now, here's the good news. If you can change your input, you can change the content and the quality and the character and the condition of your heart. And once you change what's in your heart, then you're going to change the quality of your words and you're on the path for real change. So the message that I'm driving home here in this series is to speak the word only. Well, you can't speak the word if you don't know the word. You can't speak the word only if you don't have the word down in your heart. 
So to change what is coming out, you got to change what's coming in. And you also have to change what you are giving your attention to. So the good news is that change is possible. So let me, let me talk about this as I close. So you can renew your mind with the word of God. Now, listen, I, I've been walking with God for 25 years. <laughs> when I first came to God, man, the guy that led me to Jesus, his name is Leo Jacobs. And Leo's like, my God, Pina, we were stationed in Kuwait together. He was like, man, every third word that came out of your mouth was a cuss word. I mean, it was just filth, foul, filth, foul, filth. He said, hey, we'd be like, hey, what's up, Sergeant Pina? Hey, what's up, filth, foul, filth. He said, I, you curse so much. Why? Because that was what's on the, that was inside of me. But that was 25 years ago. So you can change your life. You, you can renew your mind with the word of God. If you consistently get the word through your eye gate, it's going to get down in your heart. Through your ear gate, it's going to get down in your heart. And once it's there, then it's on you to meditate and to medicate on it day and night. If you do, you can literally change the way you think to line up with God's thinking. Once you change the way you think, you will change the way you speak because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And once you change the way you think and you change the way you speak, watch this, it's going to spill over into your actions. You're going to change the way you act. And once you change the way you, you think and the way you speak and the way you act, then guess what? You've changed. You have changed. You will wake up one morning and realize that you are speaking the word only, that you're at a place in your development with God, that you never allow a negative word to come out of your mouth, that you never allow a word that does not line up with God's will to come out of your mouth. And this is possible. And I'm going to keep preaching and teaching it because I'm convinced that the father wants us to get to the point where we speak the word only, and we will have what you, what we say. Why? Because the Bible teaches in Mark 11 that we are a whosoever and we will have whatsoever we say. So when we speak words, especially when we believe what we're saying, we are going to have what we say, speak the word only. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to lift up your voice and say this. Say, Father, I thank you for this teaching. I know my words flow out of the abundance of my heart. My heart is filled with what I see and what I listen to. From this day forward, I declare that I shall check my input <laughs> to ensure that I'm filling my heart with good things. As I fill my heart with things that are pleasing to you, my words will expose the condition of my heart. My words will be words of blessing and not cursing, of help and not hurt of good and not evil, of success and not failure. Once my input is pure and my heart is right and my words are righteous, <laughs> I cannot help but be blessed. My words will support my prayers and never cancel them out. I'm looking forward, Father, to changing my life by changing my words. I speak the word only. I declare this by faith. In Jesus' name, amen. This is today's word. Please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org, click on the big red subscribe button. And when you do that and put in your email address, you're going to get all my notes, everything I just said, all my notes in your email inbox every day for free. So why not sign up? Sign up today. Head into this day knowing that, listen, your words are really important. The Bible has a lot to say about your words. Speak the word only. You are a whosoever, and you will have whatsoever you say. Go into this day determined to speak the word over your life, and you will have what you say. I love you. God loves you more. Do me a favor. Please share this message right now on your social media, on your timeline, and with your friends. I'll see you tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. God bless you.